record. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Faces for Autism Telethon. I'm Jacob Hackett, your host, and my next guest this evening. She's the learning disability teacher at Abstecon School District. I had her for, I guess, all four of my years at Adlai's during the summer. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Catherine Irwin. I'm very happy to be here with you, Jacob. Thanks for reaching out to me. Thank you for being here. I, I, when I was going down my list of contacts, I'm like, who do I get a hold of? I've gotten a hold of people from agencies, Brett and OV. I'm like, who do I ask? And then I saw your name popped up and I thought, hmm, let's see what we can do. So here we are. So tell us a little bit about your career. I know you've had, you've been at AppSeekin for a long time. I have, I've been at AppSeekin. Um, I actually think this is gonna be, this is my 12th year there. Um, I've always been attached to the special ed department. Um, at first I started in more of an LD program. Um, kind of, I'm, I know not everybody's familiar with it, but kind of around the eighth grade end of the hallway. And then an opportunity opened up for me to move into more of the multiply disabled program and do more of a life skills, um, autism type program uh, and do, you know, be in the school garden and all that. And that's where I was lucky enough to meet you and do the, some summer programming. And I've been there for a while in that capacity in the multiply disabled program. And uh, I've enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, and I mean, and I mean, this is why you're the perfect next guest because you can give those of us that are or those that are viewing this tonight insight what it's like. Those that are watching across the country, okay, this is what I do. You're hearing it live from a teacher herself, like. Like you told me before we went on, you you do the school garden now. For those of you that don't know, I believe they still do. You can correct me if I'm wrong because it's been so long. They at Seacon Schools of the school garden at both ends still, correct? Yes, still at both ends of the garden. We're lucky enough to partner with Atlanta Care in the area and they, they help us every year with donating to uh, funds to the program. and it's really great because it's so hands-on. I mean, it's so it's so important to be able to learn about life cycles of things and um, weather cycles and how the soil interacts with not only the plants, but animals and everything. And that's all great. But when you then can go outside and see it firsthand and touch it and plant them and eat the fruits and vegetables you grow, it really just adds to the program. I, yeah. For the students and for me, you know, for for really everybody involved. Yeah, and and like you said, it's not just you; it's for the kids. It's, it it can even go as far as the whole district because you can go out, you can do a science lesson. This is how plants start out of the ground, or yeah, I mean, I mean, well, well you said you started out as an LD, and now you're an M, and a multiply. So tell us a little bit, like comparing the two. So in the learning disabilities program, um, it was a little bit more, I didn't see as many um, lower functioning students. They were a little higher functioning and were having some more academic disability. And then when I moved into more of the MD program, it, it's exactly what it sounds like. It was a little more of multiple disabilities. So there were a couple of obstacles going on there that we needed to be able to address. Um, but because of, the, you know, through the support of the school and through the support of the child study team and always, always my, my peers, the other teachers in the building, general ed teachers and everything, you can attest to this. They're just fantastic. And they always kind of jumped at any chance to help us and be included and hey we're gonna we're gonna raise monarch butterflies or hey we're gonna um, donate things to the humane society we have this project going or hey we're gonna we're gonna add um, fruit trees or do something with birds you want to be part of it and they all jumped in and did that so really for me 
the difference in switching from the from the LD program to the MD program was that my my LD students um, I feel like they moved in and out of my program a little bit easier than with the multiple disabilities students. I feel like sometimes, um, and, and obviously it goes without saying every single learner is an individual and have their own strengths and their own weaknesses. But I feel like um, adding that, adding the life skills part in it, the hands-on part of it made it a more enriched learning environment. But I also find that with the multiple disabilities programs, Sometimes it's harder to get kids out into the mainstream um, than it was when I was in like a like a LD type setting. I still push. I still, you know, try my hardest when there's an opportunity to get a student out if it's going to benefit them in any way. Um, and and thankfully for me and Absekin, again, I have great colleagues that really want to help and support that effort in any way they can. So that's good. And you brought up a very a very valid point. Um, you want to let the child expand, expand, see what they're able to do. Because I was lucky enough after I left all my friends in the Absecon district to go to a regular ed high school, and then I became the quote unquote guinea pig for the district because they never really had special ed and I really opened their eyes to say okay this is what we need to do if we mm -hmm. want to be involved. Yeah and I think that sometimes what happens is we end up fighting against um, vocabulary sometimes right like if we say here's a particular student that has a limitation that doesn't mean that with the appropriate accommodation that they're limited in any way, right? And when we say limited, we don't mean that's the, that's the end. That's not, the journey isn't over. The, the learning isn't over. The working isn't over. The growing as a person isn't over. It's just, maybe we need to tweak it a little bit to make it more, you know, more able to travel down the path we wanna head down. And then, and then the possibilities the possibilities can be limitless. They're out there if you're willing to kind of, like you said to me or before we started, roll with the punches, figure it out. If we thought this, if this was gonna be the way it would work, didn't quite work that way, let's try a different way. Not, we tried it once, it didn't work, we're done. You know, just kind of keep rolling on and trying different ways is, is really key. And that's like, I, like I've said in several other interviews tonight, you, you've got to roll with the punches. Okay, S uh, situation A might not work. Go to situation B. Will that work? Do I need to modify it? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. And when I get, if my goal is to go from A to B and I make it to B, okay, we'll start looking for something else. You're not, you're not done just because you made it to your first goal. Keep going, keep growing and expanding. Yeah. And that's important. Yeah, keep growing, keep expanding. And that's really what people need to hear. Keep growing, keep expanding. The options are, as you said, and I will say it again, limitless. There's so many choices. You could go so far. You just got, you got, you have to see, you have to have the ability to open, one, open one's eyes and say, okay, we can do this. Yes. Just let's see. And as you said, you have a terrific, um, uh, colleague, terrific colleagues and the child study team, they are just <laughs> top notch. I know it's not this, I know it's not the same people as when I was there, but yeah. it's still just as good, if not better than it was than I'm when I was there. Yeah, and it is always changing. And one of the nice things about that is, you know, we all get a little nervous sometimes with some change, but one of the nice things about it is a new person comes in, same thing with getting a new student and you, you learn from them and you learn how to approach problems the way they, they like to, and you get to 
teach them the way you like to do things. And it really makes for a nice working relationship. Yeah. And you, you said it because you're teaching others, hey, I didn't know this, I'll learn this. Like yeah. it's all, it's all in how you learn. And that's what we're really trying to drive home tonight. Learn autism. Hey, you might not have ever been around someone. Okay, learn what it's like. Go to these functions when the world opens up again. See what these organizations are all about. Even if you're watching from, say, California, doesn't mean that they don't have that out there. They probably right. do in some order or some fashion. It's true. And it, sometimes it can be overwhelming to look for services or resources or help. But there are so many people out there that are willing to do it. And, and just to kind of keep hitting home, it seems to be our theme here in this, in this conversation, which is funny because we didn't decide on a theme. Um, but keep learning. Whether you are the child study team member, whether you're the teacher, whether you're the parent, whether you're the student, all of us have a great knowledge together, more, more so together than we do apart. So share your information with each other and, and recognize that there's always more to learn. There's always more to do. Yeah, and then for those of you who have children that are in high school, there is a, I believe it's a state mandate that the, when the kids turn, I just learned this last week, 13 or 14, when the kids turn a certain age, they're invited to their IEP meetings. They're invited to their transition meetings. If the kid's able and can vouch for what they want, the IEP can be extremely resourceful because I went to mine ever, ever since my last one in AppSeq in the eighth grade with Trish, uh, Trish uh, Wagner as, in reference to, as a uh, transition meeting, I went through all mine in high school, and then I went to my last handful as post-secondary special services. And they really got a clue or a grasp on what I saw, what they saw in me, the differences, it's important. Yeah, it's important. And I think that it lends itself to that whole idea of, okay, we're not, at a, we're not at a finish line here. This is our plan for moving forward. So the IEP isn't a list of the things that you can't do. It's a plan for how are we going to accomplish the things that we want to accomplish? What can we do? And who better really to tell us that than, than the student, especially as you said, when they're able to participate. Yeah, and that's why if you're a caseworker watching and you're thinking, I've got students in my district that are near the age or even at the age that can do this. Have them be a voice. Hey, I went to all mine as I said, and I think I not only surprised people, but I gave them some very valuable information. Sure. Yeah. So not only that, just, and, and, I'm going to have you go into just a little bit your, what you do with the kids. Like I remember you did cooking and we talked about the garden and what, like, is there anything in addition? Because it's been a while. It has been a while. And I feel like we are sort of always working on a project um, for a while there, not, not right now, but right now is kind of an outlier, right? It's kind of crazy right now. Yeah. Um, but we have done hydroponics for our for herbs and stuff to contribute to the cafeteria in the school. Um, we our cooking has changed a little bit because there are some rules out there about um, when we first started. We used to bake cookies and sell them to the students, um, but we're not allowed to do that anymore just because of um, not be, not because the school won't let us, but because of another um, just regulations about what we're allowed to serve. Um, so now we serve staff members and what it looks like is um, students put out a survey 
they take a they take inventory of what the staff wants to order for breakfasts one day a week used to be Fridays but now we do Thursdays just again because of the crazy schedule um, so they put out an order form staff will order and it comes back in and then the students will make a list of what we're going to need in order to fill the orders and we come in the next day on on right now I said Thursday they cook the food they deliver it they accept donations um, we do things like figure out how much money we spend on each item you know the the sandwich the ingredients in the sandwich the wrapping for the sandwich um, and we do cost analyses to see how much we're making and then all of that money goes back into the school and into the special education department which is great because again excellent staff that i work with always have more than enough money so we're able to turn around and donate back to the school too things like laminators and gym mats and you know signs and things like that so it's it feels good and it feels good for the students to be able to say ooh those new mats we got in the gym are because we worked so hard on something um, so that's always really rewarding for for them and for me yeah yeah and at the at the end of the day um, that's what's important you you want the kids to feel like okay, I did something good today. I did something, I got something good for the school, which something good came out of, like the gym mats, as you said. Yeah, you know, their hard work, their, their, all of their efforts. And, and then some, sometimes that, that translates more into a student who's just working on getting up the um, skill set to walk into a classroom, greet a group of people, state why they're there, you know? So, so it's nice because there's so many different levels of, okay, this student is great, can figure out the cost analysis, is calculating all the costs and profits and figuring everything out. And another student is working on walking into a room and saying, good morning, Mrs. Mrs. So-and-so, here's your breakfast, hope you have a nice day, thank you, and leaving, like just the social interaction of it too. Um, so I do really like activities like that because we're middle school. So um, when we transition out of middle school into high school, there are a lot of high schools that have job opportunities, um, working in cafeterias, working in student stores, selling um, like spirit gear and things like that. And if, if we can already have exposed our students to that, then they're much more prepared when they get into high school, which is great. Yeah, and just like you said, you don't, like you have this high school when they, when they leave you after eighth grade or they leave the district, I mean, but, but who knows if they have that? Yes, special services has that if they go that route. Yes, I know ACIT has something to that extent. But who knows where the where the students next steps will take them. So that's why it's all more important as we've driven home during this interview tonight. See what's out there, see what would best support the child. Yes. And looking at autism comes on many different levels. And I know you've had many. You've had students with autism on many different levels. So, so that's yes. also what we're trying to drive home. Yes, and it's important too to remember that, that just like with anybody else, with any other student, with any other um, teacher even, we're all different. So getting to know the individual and their particular personality and their strengths and their needs is so important. Try, coming kind of coming to the table with a student with autism without any preconceptions about who they are going to be or how they're going to act or what's going to be difficult for them is important because you have to start off that kind of teacher student relationship ready to conquer the world together like what do you want how can i help you get there and then and then let the student let the student lead you right and i'm going to well, I'm going to uh, quote someone, something I heard in, it was actually a funny story. It was a, um, Afsagami did our 
our uh, Field of Dreams video, which is one of the organizations we're also supporting tonight. And, uh, and I did mention that a little while ago. You have to try it. You have to let, the, let your child expand. Let them have friends. Let them be in public settings because you heard it from another teacher that I had on here an hour ago. She said she has virtual, uh, more virtual than in person. When it's safe, let the kid go outside. Let them be exposed to the real world, just as you and I are. Yes, I agree. So please, I've said it tonight, I've said it a thousand times tonight and I'll say it more. Please, faces need your money. Field of Dreams needs your money and the surrounding organizations that we're supporting tonight. They need your money. Donate, donate, donate. The number is down the bottom of the screen. We're on Venmo, we're on Facebook. Go on the website. Any little bit counts. I know times are tough, as we said in the beginning. Please donate. Very good. So thank, thank you. This this was a lot of fun. It was great catching up. As I this said, this was fun. Yes, it's been way too long.